Hey, Andy here with Ultimate Tool Reviews. We're looking at some of the history of battery technology, also when it relates to power tools as well. So I've got a few different items here on my workstation. We're gonna be checking out a few different things over the years and how battery technology for power tools has evolved over the years. Also why power tool technology has even maybe skipped a few types of technology as well too. Um, in the essence of safety. So guys, let's jump right into it and we'll start here with something back in the 80s and 90s. All right, starting here on the left with some of the first power tool batteries. Uh, they were gonna be uh, NICAD or nickel cadmium. And these batteries, you know, they worked great at the time, but you know, once we moved to lithium ion batteries, the downsides of NICAD batteries uh, were definitely very apparent. So as you can see from this battery, we're at a 9.6 volt, 1.3 amp hour. And this thing is definitely not light by any means. On the scale, they are reading 13.7 ounces. And if I put a far superior lithium ion 5 amp hour battery on there, one pound, 6.4 ounces. So much more power can be packed into a 5 amp hour at 18 volt lithium ion battery than say a NICAD at only 9.6 volts and 1.3 amp hours. So the amount of watt hours in this battery is gonna be far inferior to some of the newer lithium ion batteries. Now that's not the only downside of these batteries. Um, they also suffer from issues like battery memory. Um, when they discharge, uh, they also suffer from a voltage drop. And what that can mean is when you're using a power tool, you're gonna start seeing that power tool become weaker and weaker and weaker as this battery is discharged more and more. Whereas lithium ion batteries, they have some ways to get around that. And also they are designed with internal circuitry that stops the battery from discharging when it becomes too low. So there's a number of advantages that you see when you bump up to lithium ion that the older Nikon batteries just don't have and they still continue to suffer from. Now these batteries really aren't used in much anymore like power tools. So, you know, Nikon batteries, they were great in their time, but of course now they're just outdated and not the best batteries to use anymore. All right, now we move into something a little bit interesting here. I've got lithium ion batteries on both my left and my right, but there's actually a pretty big difference here between these two batteries. And it's not just the size of the batteries. On my left here, I have a Game Boy Advance SP. This thing is way over 10, 15 years old. Uh, these things came out quite a while ago, and this is quite an old one. I've used it, you know, plenty, but check this out. It still functions turns on fine and holds actually a decent charge. I can still game for three, four, five, six hours on this thing without having to recharge the battery. However though, if you were to get a Makita battery that's gonna be hitting that 10, 15 year old range, you'd probably not see very much life out of that battery at all. If anything, it'd be very hard to find a Makita battery that is still functioning after 10 or 15 years. Now, why is that? Well, great question. They're both lithium ion batteries. Both are different sizes but the secret is actually gonna lie in how they're charged and the type of charge that's being used. So if we look at the Game Boy Advance SP charger here. Now, one thing of course is gonna be the voltage difference. This is gonna be an 18 volt battery in the Makita. However, in the Game Boy Advance, we're looking at a 5.2 volt. Now that really doesn't play into too much of an effect here in the battery longevity, but notice the output of this charger, 320 milliamp is gonna be this charger. Now, if I pull out a Makita, this is just a regular Makita DC18RC rapid charger here. Um, this will charge batteries very fast. And that Game Boy Advance SP that I have over here on my left is gonna charge quite slow. Should take anywhere between two, three, four hours to recharge fully. How these Makita chargers can charge a much larger battery in much less time, definitely under an hour, somewhere between 30 and 50 minutes for most batteries. Now check out the back of this charger here. Output is going to be 18 volt at nine amps. So we've got a lot more power pushing into that 18 volt battery. Now, if you compare the battery, um, you know, of course we've got different size batteries here, but the amount of power going into one battery is astronomically more powerful than the smaller battery. 
One of the big things that makes batteries last a lot longer, especially lithium ion batteries, is controlling the level of heat those batteries experience. So the recharge and the discharge rates, if those are slower and definitely kept at a cooler temperature, the battery can last a lot longer. So things like Game Boy Advance, you know, SPs, when they charge a lot slower, they also discharge a lot slower because this little SP here is barely pulling any power out of this battery. Uh, this thing has, I think, between seven and 10 hours of battery life, and it pulls that battery very, very slow. Whereas the Makita batteries at five amp hour, you can burn these batteries, say, in a mower or one of the blowers or a chainsaw in about 10 minutes or less. These things can be discharged very, very fast. They can get very, very hot. Now that takes down the battery life and the battery health. So by discharging and recharging a battery at a higher rate, causing more heat, you're gonna lose a lot of your battery life. So while we have two different types of batteries here, both lithium ion, but for different uses, that recharge rate can definitely affect your battery life. So how do some of the big brands, Makita, DeWalt, and Milwaukee compare when it comes to recharge rates? Now, this can be kind of tough to exactly summarize because all these brands have different size batteries and they also have different levels of battery chargers that charge at different rates. Um, Makita seems to be the easiest one, really a simple solution to that. Um, almost all of their chargers are gonna be at a nine amp hour. They, Makita loves the rapid chargers. Um, I would say the vast majority of the Makita chargers are all rapid chargers. That's pretty much all I've ever got when I've bought Makita tools. Now DeWalt, I feel has the most variance when it comes to chargers. So if you look at the model number on the DeWalt chargers, DCB115. Uh, if you look at the output that it's going to charge from here, it's going to charge at four amps. So of course, it's going to be less than half the speed of the Makita. Now we are talking very apples to apples here because these are all 18 volt batteries here, whether it's from DeWalt um, or Milwaukee. All right, now I know what you're thinking. Well, the DeWalt is a 20 volt max battery and the Makita and the Milwaukee are gonna be 18 volt batteries. Now, while that is true, DeWalt is claiming a 20 volt at maximum. Now, these batteries all do run at 18 volts. Um, you can compare batteries actually quite easy by checking out the watt hour, which is gonna be on the bottom of all these batteries. So the Makita has a 90 watt hour. The DeWalt has a 100 watt hour. They're claiming that 20 volt max times that five amp hour rating. And the Milwaukee also has the exact same rating as the Makita at a 90 watt hour as well. So watt hours are calculated very simple. All you do is multiply the, the amp hour of the battery by the voltage of the battery. That's how you get the watt hours of the battery. Uh, basically, all you got to do is look at, you know, when you look at the batteries, the amp hour is a good way to tell like a fuel size or fuel tank size of that battery. All right, so now let's look at the Milwaukee charger. We already have the Makita charger at nine amps outputting. The DeWalt over here is gonna be at four amps, while this Milwaukee charger is gonna be at three amp hour charger. This will charge the battery the slowest out of all of these three chargers. Now this is just the standard Milwaukee charger. Milwaukee chargers pretty much only go up from here. So you can of course pick up more rapid chargers. Um, the DeWalt chargers, you can actually find much lower end chargers. Um, I keep the DCB 115s because they're pretty much one of the fastest chargers that doesn't have a fan in it and you'll find in most kits. So now what does this mean for battery life? We look at the speed of charging with those amps there. Now, as we compare it to that Game Boy Advance SP, a slower charger will help a battery last longer. But of course that prevents a larger disadvantage where say you're using batteries at a much more rapid pace. You can't let batteries sit in the charger for a couple hours. So of course you gotta make a bit of a choice there. Do you wanna go with a charge that's gonna be faster but give you less life out of a battery, but let you get more work done in a shorter period of time? Or do you wanna go with something that's gonna give you, of course, more life, but it's gonna take longer to charge that battery? That's kind of the question that, you know, it's up to you really what you wanna do. Um, I don't mind using the Makita stuff on their rapid chargers because some rapid chargers, every brand actually has one that has a fan built in to kind of control that thermal load of that battery. So by keeping that battery cooler while it's charging, it's gonna help prolong the life of that battery. 
So now keeping your battery cooler, keeping the charges, you know, of course, controlled. Um, I looked into some of the batteries here from DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Nikita, and a lot of what I saw from recommended from the brands was to charge when the battery is about halfway down. Don't let it go all the way down to zero. Uh, if you've ever seen some of the tools and stuff video, I think he's the only YouTuber that I've seen that had it. On the Makita line, there's actually a Makita uh, battery reader that'll tell you the number of charges, number of time it's been over discharged, and some other things when it comes to battery health, the cell health as well too. So by running these batteries down too low, you can damage the battery. Um, by running them too fast when you get them too low can cause them battery damage or to dis start discharging them too quickly can cause battery damage as well as charging them too fast will also cause battery damage. Now, some of those issues are now being kind of fixed a little bit when we get into some of the stacked lithium um, pouch cells. Now, there's only two brands that have that so far. DeWalt has a 1.7 amp hour pouch cell, and Flex is pretty much leading right now. I don't have any of those pouch cell batteries here, but Flex is absolutely dominating that with, a th with basically three different sizes of that pouch cell battery. Now, if you've ever seen a laptop, um, if you've ever seen the older laptops as those batteries start getting older, they might start expanding um, in those batteries. That can be a little bit of a dangerous situation as lithium ion batteries can, of course, start on fire, possibly even explode. Now, of course, it can happen with these cylindrical cell batteries as well, too, um, but it's less likely with these batteries. Um, now, when you go into the pouch cell batteries, um, of course, they have a higher discharge, higher recharge rate because they can dissipate the heat at a much greater, greater capacity than the cylindrical cell batteries can. So we're seeing some advances in battery technology happening so far, but in my opinion, I think we need to see something else in lithium ion. Uh, there's some new battery technology kind of coming on the pipeline, like graphene batteries. I think CAT has one of those for their power tool line, but I don't really know what happened to that right now too much. It doesn't seem like it's really going anywhere too fast. Now there's one type of battery that is used in the RC world that is really never used in the tool world. Here I've got a DJI Phantom 4. This is a LiPo battery or lithium polymer battery. Um, similar to the pouch cells used in some of the stacked lithium batteries, but it uses a different type of battery technology that actually allows you to compress or have a higher density um, power into a smaller battery pack. Now, there's one big disadvantage with these battery packs while they're not used in power tools, and that's because, of course, when you put a higher density power into a smaller battery pack, your chance of explosion or fire is much, much greater. So that's why they're really not used too much or basically at all in any power tools because they can't handle the drops, they can't handle the repeated charge cycles of what we need in lithium ion battery packs. Now, I've been mentioning, of course, you know, batteries expanding, bulging batteries, batteries that catch on fire, batteries that explode. Of course, that's always going to be an issue whenever you have anything with the lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries. I definitely recommend you would pick up something like a LiPo Guard or LiPo Safe battery um, case like this. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. I got a two pack for 10 bucks. Now what they are is basically a bag that'll help contain any damage um, if a battery were to say explode or catch on fire. Now, whether or not you even have a LiPo battery, I, th I still think it's a good idea to at least have one of these bags on hand just in case you say have a power tool battery that starts bulging some of the battery packs. Um, once a battery can start bulging, all it takes is those lithium ion cells in there to say make contact and that battery can start on fire or that battery can explode. Um, checking on YouTube, you're gonna see a lot of videos of say some of those um, hoverboards or at cell phone repair shops, batteries catching fire, batteries exploding. Um, now it's not a huge risk when it comes to lithium ion batteries, but if you were to say get a battery that is gonna be damaged, you drop it, um, it starts expanding, being able to throw it in one of those bags and then take it to a uh, safe recycling center is gonna give you a little bit extra protection that for 10 bucks, I think is totally worth it. I wouldn't wanna have a battery that's about to possibly explode in my, inside of my truck as I'm taking it to a recycling center and make a giant mess, start my truck on fire, melt the seats, do some damage in there, when a $10 bag like this can really solve all those issues really quickly. All right, now let's move into battery adapters. 
As I covered earlier in the video, all of these batteries are at a nominal 18 volts, meaning that as long as the voltage rate is the same, these should work on any other power tool that also is 18 volts. Now, a battery adapter can be a bit of a tricky thing. Uh, my rule with battery adapters is as long as the tool is not a high drain tool or high discharge tool, it's generally pretty safe to use a battery adapter on the tool. So for example, if I take this Milwaukee battery, this is a Milwaukee or DeWalt adapter to Makita. I can actually use this with a Makita tool and I am all set here. So with this multi-tool, this will work just fine. Now it does present a few weaknesses. These battery adapters are only really as good as they're made and a lot of them aren't made very well. Um, it's going to be the weak point between these two tools. Um, you can see there's a bit of play in here. This isn't the best plastic compared to the Milwaukee battery or the Makita tool itself. And it does add basically another almost full inch between the battery and the tool. It also has another serious disadvantage. If we notice on the bottom of this Makita tool, there's gonna be three different pins here. Now that third pin is gonna be that star protection technology. It allows that tool to communicate with the battery and say, hey, we're pulling too much power, uh, we're getting too hot, and it'll actually shut down that tool before there's any damage to the battery or the tool. When you use a battery adapter, notice what's missing there, that third pin. And it really can't even add the third pin on anyways because a Makita tool can't talk to a Milwaukee battery. They just talk in two different languages. And of course, there's no way for them to be able to say, hey, I'm getting too hot, I gotta shut down. And same thing with the tool and vice versa. So by using a battery adapter, you basically bypass all of that protection technology. Something to be very aware of whenever you're using a battery adapter. However though, let's say you're a big Milwaukee guy, you got all Milwaukee tools, but someone hands you a Makita multi-tool for free. Of course, it might not be worth it to buy some Makita batteries and the charger and get a whole nother system, but by picking up one $20 battery adapter, you can now use any of your Milwaukee tools or Milwaukee batteries with that Makita tool. And what I actually like to do is if I've got any tools that say I'm gonna use this tool when I have all my Makita stuff with me, um, or I've got all my Milwaukee stuff with me, I like to just put the battery adapter on the tool and leave it there. Now this is basically just a Milwaukee ready tool at any time. Or what I like about this battery adapter is that it also works with the DeWalt batteries at the same time as well too. So yes, this now works with DeWalt and Milwaukee batteries on this Makita tool. I've got a number of these adapters. They are very useful for low drain tools. Now I did have an issue where I pushed the thing to its limits. I didn't get it on video, unfortunately, um, but I was using a Milwaukee reciprocating saw with battery adapters to DeWalt batteries. Um, now, luckily, um, I didn't damage the tool or the battery, but I did end up melting most of this battery after itself, just running too much current through it. It really couldn't handle it, and I destroyed the battery adapter, unfortunately. Now, of course, that's where you want to be careful when you use tools that are really going to be high discharge rate tools. You don't want to be using those tools with these type of adapters. These are great for things like, you know, a small multi-tool, maybe light use with a drill. Um, I would say even like a nailer would be fantastic. Very little pull out of that battery and it's gonna be pretty safe. They're gonna add a little bit of weight to that tool, a little bit of um, size to that tool as well too. So that's one cool thing about all the tool brands being basically at 18 volts. You can buy these adapters on Amazon and they're gonna work pretty well for you know saving you some money and having to buy into a whole other tool line. So that's another thing to be aware of when it comes to battery technology. All right, guys, hope this video was informative. Hope I was able to answer some of your questions on battery technology and how it relates to power tools. Also, how you can be safer with your power tool batteries, um, things about maybe some of your questions on some of the battery adapters, why certain batteries last longer than other batteries, and why it's important to also keep track of how fast and how much heat your battery power, your batteries are putting out and how that can relate to battery longevity. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, like and comment and subscribe if you get a chance. Uh, guys, take care, have a great day, and thanks for watching.